Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and if crossing over problems gave you headaches before, uh, today you are lucky because in a few minutes you would be able to solve such problems very easily and I am going to show you how. And here is a problem in a given organism, two pairs of contrasting genes are under investigation, dominant allele A versus uh, recessive allele A and dominant allele B versus recessive allele B. An F1 individual resulting from a cross between two homozygous strains was test crossed and the following test cross progeny were recovered. And here is a table and we have to answer three questions. Question A. Are these two genes linked or independent? And before I will give you an answer, here is a theory first. Imagine that we have um, two set of uh, chromosomes, say so this is going to be chromosome number one, that is represented by two chromosomes uh, that we inherited, one from the uh, say mother side, another from the father side. So this is two homologous chromosomes, uh, we call homologous chromosomes, chromosomes that are basically almost identical, but because we inherited them from the different parents, they may have different inconsistencies here. Uh, say here we may have uh, one gene and here we may have the same gene but different, slightly different version due to some uh, say point mutation or it can be a uh, mutation of in, in many places. So uh, this is one pair of uh, chromosomes. Here would be chromosome number two, that is also would be represented by two homologous chromosomes. And now imagine that we have here allele uh, dominant A and here we have recessive allele A. Somewhere here we have dominant allele B and recessive allele B. And this is diploid organism and this diploid organism would produce gametes. So male gametes would be sperm, female gametes would be egg cells. But in gametes we would be able to find only one of these chromosomes. If these genes, gene A and B, would be on the different chromosomes, we can expect following ratios of um, genotypes in the gametes. So we may have combination of this chromosome and this chromosome, so genotype would be capital A and capital B in the gametes and we also may have uh, this combination of uh, chromosomes, so we would have capital A and small b. Another variant would be this chromosome and this chromosome we would have small a and capital B and the last variant would be this chromosome and this chromosome and genotype of the gamete would be small a and small b. So as you see uh, probability of each genotype would be equal. So about uh, one quarter for each. So 25% we expect this genotype to find in the gametes, 25% this genotype, 25% this genotype and 25% this genotype, because these uh, genes would segregate independently, so would make all these com uh, combinations and probability would be equal. But what if two genes would be on the same chromosome? So now imagine that we have gene A here, so dominant allele A here and recessive allele A here and dominant allele B here and recessive allele B here. Now uh, segregation wouldn't be independent. So we may find uh, genotype in the uh, gametes capital A and capital B, small a and small b. But not only these two genotypes we can find, uh, also crossing over may happen 
between uh, these two genes. Then in a progeny we would be able to find uh, non-parental uh, genotypes. So parental genotypes would be capital A, capital B and small a, small b. And we would be able to find hybrids capital A, small b and small a, capital B. But what would be proportions? Proportions is not going to be the same as we see here because we would have gene linkage here. If uh, these two genes would be on the uh, different uh, edges of the chromosome, then due to crossing over we may obtain almost the same ratios as we see here because in this case uh, behavior of these genes would be the same as if they would be on the uh, two different chromosomes. But if the distance uh, between gene A and B would be, uh, say, half of the chromosome length, then we can expect that crossing over, uh, number of crossing over would be reduced in comparison with situation when gene A would be uh, at this tip of the chromosome and gene B would be at this tip of the chromosome. So we can expect that a crossing over would happen twice uh, less in comparison with the first variant that I described. And if two genes would be very close together, for example, if gene B would be here and here, uh, crossing over may even uh, not happen because two genes would be too close together and crossing over would be very rare event. So uh, let's take a look at this table, what we see here. We see here a disproportional amount of uh, each genotype that we obtained and that tell us that uh, these genes, gene A and B are linked genes because we do not see here 25%, 25, 25 and 25% ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 and to 1. So our conclusions are that uh, gene A and B are on the same chromosome. That's why such an even um, numbers that we obtain and uh, this give us information that uh, this genotype that is capital A and small b and small a and capital B would be uh, hybrids result of the crossing over. And now we can do some calculations and find what is the frequency of this um, crossing over and this is how we can find the distance between these genes which we measure in uh, centimorgans. So let's do some calculations and uh, in order to find frequency of the recombinants we have to combine them. So 87 plus 92 and we have to divide by total number of observed. So 621, 621 plus 87 plus 92 plus 610. So we are going to get 179 over 1410. And if we divide these numbers, we are going to get 12.7% of the recombination or uh, we can say that uh, distance between gene uh, A and B would be 12.7 centimorgans. Or we can measure this recombination frequency in percent form. So let's now return to our questions. Are these two genes linked or independent? We have found that these genes, gene A and B, are linked and are on the same chromosome because we see here number of recombinants and number of parental 
genotypes that is not uh, equal and this is our conclusion that uh, these two genes have to be uh, close enough to each other and recombination frequency would be 12.7%. So, uh, question B, if link, what is the amount of recombination that has occurred between them? We have found 12.7%. And this is going to be a distance between these two genes, which is going to be 12.7 centimorgans. What are the genotypes of the original strains? And we have to choose those genotypes that is represented in the largest uh, quantities here. And this is going to be this uh, genotype here and this genotype here. And by the way, as you see, quantity would be almost uh, the same. So 621 and 610. And this gives us information that genotypes of the parental generation was capital A and uh, capital B and small a and small b. So once again in green color represent genotypes of the uh, parents and in pink color represented genotypes of the recombinants. I hope my explanation were clear enough and now you would be able to solve analogous problems. As you see this is very easy. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video, please write your comments, questions if you have any, share this video with your classmates, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.